สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to h a t t h a i Kitchen. When I was writing the dessert chapter in my cookbook, one thing that I noticed very quickly was that in Thailand we do a lot of dessert soups, and which is so rare in Western desserts, right? So today I want to share with you a really easy and delicious dessert soup called s a k u k a n t a l o u p Now s a k u is tapioca pearls, and k a n t a l o u p is Cantaloupe, <laughs> and so I absolutely love this dessert. And cantaloupe happens to be in season right now in Vancouver, so it's perfect, perfect timing. So let's get started. So I'm going to start by making the broth of this soup, and it's super easy. I'm using three different liquids. The first one is coconut water. I love using coconut water in really just about anything because it's just so delicious. And then you don't have to add as much sugar because there's natural sweetness in here. And then for a little richness, coconut milk. Of course, I don't think there's a Thai dessert that doesn't involve coconut in some form. Now this dessert will often have milk as well, so I am adding just whole milk. You can do skim or one percent, two percent, whatever you have at home if you want it a little bit lighter. And if you see a Thai dessert that has milk in it, chances are it's one of the newer ones because the old school, ancient, traditional recipes we never use dairy in any of that. So it's sort of a relatively new thing. Okay. Pandan leaves. Now, pandan leaves I've used in many of my desserts. It's sort of our version of vanilla. It has a beautiful floral, a little bit coconutty aroma, and we put it in like the majority of our desserts. It's optional here because the cantaloupe will have its own aroma, but I think it's just lovely to add it to the broth as well. And you can get it frozen or fresh at your Asian grocery store. This recipe, because it's a broth, it's super flexible. You can add as much or as little sugar as you like. So just add and taste, and it also depends on how sweet your coconut water is as well. And also taste your cantaloupe before you make the broth because if the cantaloupe is very sweet, this doesn't have to be very sweet. If it's not, then you want to make it up with the broth. Perfect. So now I'm just gonna bring this to a simmer to allow the aroma from the pandan leaves to infuse, and that's it. That's the broth right there. And then I'm just gonna let it cool completely because this is a cold dessert in the fridge. Now the tapioca. So for this, you want small tapioca pearls, okay? And I'm using. This rainbow color run, but you can just use white or whatever color you want. Now they come in a pack just like this, and they're really cheap. I mean, it's like a dollar fifty or something like that. Widely available at most Asian grocery stores. So the number one problem that people have with cooking tapioca pearls is that the pearls stick together into a big mush. Okay, and that's because the water is not fully boiling. If the water is not on a full boil, the pearls will just sort of like dissolve into each other. But if it's boiling like this, it'll just sort of seal the outside, and that's how you prevent them from sticking together. So this is the most important thing. You don't have to rinse it or wash it or anything. Some people like to do that. I mean, they're they're pretty clean in my opinion. Okay, so I'm just gonna drop them in. Whee! And in the beginning, I like to stir and really crank the heat because you want the water to come back to a full boil as soon as possible. There we go. And you just put lots and lots of water, like you're making pasta. Okay, put lots of water. And as long as the pearls are kind of dancing in this boiling water, they will not stick together and they will not stick to the bottom. So you don't have to stir it. And so this will just take about 12 to 15 minutes. So after about 12 minutes, I'm gonna fish them out into a bowl of cold water. And what you're looking for is you can still sort of see the middle bit of the white bit of the pearls, but they're quite small by this point. And I'm gonna just transfer them quickly into this bowl of water, and that'll just stop them from cooking any further. And two, it will wash off. There's my timer. Yes, thank you. Um, it'll wash off. Any of the gooey tapioca starch that's loose in the pot, as you can see, the liquid now is really quite gooey, and I don't want any of that. So I have a fine mesh skimmer that would be perfect for this job, but I forgot it. So now I have this one's getting to be too big, so I need this sieve to the rescue. All right, so now I'm gonna drain this into my sieve. Now you could drain this directly. But with this sieve that I have, it would melt the sieve because it's a plastic sieve. So I'm gonna run some cold water over it just to make sure it's cold. None, nothing is sticking together. Rinse off any excess starch, and that is it. 
So the tapioca is ready, the broth is cooling, now just one more thing and we are done. And that is scooping melons! So I've got here some nice ripe sweet cantaloupe and some honeydew melon. You can just do cantaloupe, but you know, two colors are nicer than one. So I'm gonna use my melon baller here and scoop out bite-sized scoops. So I like smaller pieces so it doesn't sort of overwhelm the tapioca. So this melon baller came with my toolkit when I was a culinary school student and I think the only thing I've ever used it for is when I make this dessert. <laughs> Otherwise it just sits there somewhere in the corner. Okay, I'm ready to serve. Look how easy that was. It always surprises me how quick and easy this dessert is. So a little bit of tapioca in the bottom of the bowl and you can put as much or as little as you like. You can, you know, make this more of a drink if you want, or you can make it more of a, like a spooning kind of soup, whatever you like. Now the melon goes in. Now I personally prefer the cantaloupe, so I always want to put like an extra cantaloupe in compared to the honeydew melon, but I just love the color of both. All right, and now the broth, which is now cold, goes in. Now you don't want to put this together too far ahead of time because the tapioca will continue to absorb that broth, okay? So I would say put this together when you're ready to eat or at the most within the hour of eating, all right? Look how cute that is! It's like a little jewel. Give it a little stir to break up the tapioca a little bit. I just love how fun and cute this looks. Oh, it smells so good. Mmm. Mmm. I love it. I love the texture. The tapioca sort of just rolls around in your mouth. I mean, you can barely chew it. It just kind of slips and slides in your mouth. Really aromatic. The combination of the cantaloupe smell and the pandan leaves, the coconut milk, the coconut water, and it's light, it's refreshing. Oh, I can't think of a better thing to have on a hot summer day or if you've had like a heavy dinner and you just want something light, something sweet and light to end a meal, this is so perfect. So I hope you give this a try and the recipe as always will be on hotthaikitchen.com and when you make it, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Oh, I forgot to tell you, if you don't like cantaloupe, you can put mangoes in it, really delicious as well. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal. And so this will just take about 12 to 15 minutes.